Kea Holy Point is a place of contrasts. Stark lava fields butt up against the blue Pacific. In the warm climate, cold water from the depths creates opportunities otherwise impossible. Here, the tiniest marine plants are cultured and turned into health products right next door to tanks holding the largest marine plants, which are used as fodder for other organisms. At ocean farms of Hawaii, the business is raising salmon, as well as abalone, oysters, sea urchins. And it's their kelp forest we traveled through earlier. In the early 80s, the company came to the point and began work on a 21-acre parcel of land. It's the largest user of the cold water available. We decided to start our venture here in Hawaii back in 1982 for basically two reasons. There was a very favorable government environment, and government's very important to us. And secondly, this is one of the few places in the world where the ocean floor drops off steeply, and we can pump deep ocean waters uh, with very short pipelines. In addition to the supply provided by the energy lab, Ocean Farms has installed two more pipes, each providing over 2,000 gallons per minute to handle the requirements of its four-acre, 15-million-gallon pond. Plans call for at least three more ponds in the near future. The heart of Ocean Farms' success is large-scale replication of natural conditions. Providing this kind of environment minimizes some of the problems more likely to plague smaller systems. Once again, what makes so much of this possible is the water. The water here is, is pure, it's cold, and we grow cold water animals. It's rich in certain nutrients that we use for growing the plants that our animals eat. It's the best of, of all situations. Every day, the water quality is exactly the same as it was the day before. And we can hold the temperature, for instance, which is very important for all the plants and animals we grow at exactly the ideal temperature. Polyculture, or the growing of more than one kind of crop in the same environment, has also been a plus for ocean farms. Blooms of small plants called diatoms blown into the tanks and pond can be a problem, clouding water and causing physical damage to some culture organisms. The European oysters grown by ocean farms are the unlikely heroes of this story. The oysters feed on the diatoms and help keep their levels under control. As a result, Kelp thrives in the unclouded water, providing an ample food supply for the abalone and urchins, and the salmon are protected from gill damage caused by sharp diatom parts. Gourmet quality oysters are a profitable and happy bonus to a culture problem. While the oyster growing process seems easy, there's still an incredible amount of work that goes into getting animals to market. One major ocean farm's cash crop is abalone. The culture process begins with the brood stock, where eggs and sperm are collected and mixed to ensure fertilization. After the eggs hatch, the abalone larvae are maintained in special tanks for a week or so. About that time, they settle out and begin crawling. The young abalone are fed diatoms. At this stage, size of food is as much a part of the menu decision as nutritional value. After a while, the larger abalone are transferred to grow out grids and fed kelp. Here, they're harvested when they reach a length of about three inches. The careful monitoring and culturing techniques are applied to every species cultured, including sea urchins. The sea urchins are cultured because of their international popularity as an ingredient in sushi. Demand for the urchin row quickly depleted natural populations along the North American coast, making culture an attractive alternative. A single sea urchin can reach harvesting size in three to four years and can produce roe valued at $20. Pretty impressive for an animal that until the latter 1970s was eradicated as a threat to North American kelp beds. Population shortages also make salmon culture worthwhile. The Chinook and Coho salmon currently grown at Keaholi Point are products of eggs flown in from Oregon but the culture work has progressed to the point where some of the stock are now ready to reproduce locally. It's hoped that full salmon operation can be centered in Hawaii once a regular program of egg production is established. 
Salmon fingerlings are maintained in carefully monitored conditions under shade cloth in the main ocean farms complex. To mimic nature, the fish are hatched in fresh water. From that point on, they're introduced to increasing salinity. When they're totally acclimated to salt water, they're transferred to the big grow-out tanks and pond. Every one of the plants and animals we grow here are not native to Hawaii, and so we have to create an environment that they will live in that is quite different than the surface ocean conditions that, that we have as, as, as the native conditions. The salmon live in, in much colder water, and they won't live at these warm temperatures. So we have to create in these ponds and tanks and, and uh, in our hatcheries that temperature that is best for them. Same is true of abalone, same is true of oysters, same is true of, uh, of our uh, sea urchins. We've had to, to create an environment that they will not only like, but that they will thrive in. About 7,500 salmon live in each of the two large tanks. 30,000 of them swim the waters of the pond. In order to achieve market weight of a pound in less than two years, the fish receive multiple feedings each day. The fish in this tank consume about 300 pounds of fish food daily. In addition to those feedings, they can also stack on their own, thanks to self-feeders positioned above the water. Food is released whenever the fish hit the wire lever that extends into the water. Every month, the fish are collected to determine how well the crop is doing as a whole. The process is a delicate and time-consuming one. It demands attentiveness and coordination between members of the weighing team. The fish are lured into large holding bins and netted for weighing. To keep them from hurting themselves during this stressful activity, the fish are anesthetized, rapidly weighed for total weight, and returned to the water where the effects of the anesthetic quickly wear off. At Keaholi Point, all of the projects from energy production to lobster growing are preparing for the day when they can regularly offer their products to the consumer. Phil Wilson's confidence allows him to smile when discussions turn to doubts about success. If uh, we have a skeptic visit who says it won't work, we agree, yeah, it hasn't worked yet. You're right, right on. And probably um, they wouldn't be a candidate to, good candidate to work here. Um, there's lots of problems, and we know there's going to be problems. But if we solve the problems, uh, which we can identify, then um, we'll be successful and that'll be its own reward. None of the people here is satisfied with conducting research and experiments simply for the sake of science. As well as being scientists, they're also business people and their dreams all have a practical side. Our goal of Royal Hawaiian Sea Farms is to produce uh, a variety of edible sea vegetables and to educate uh, people here and uh, on the mainland United States that edible sea vegetables are good and nutritious. Um, that would be the most rewarding thing is to see it as a, uh, a common day uh, vegetable just as broccoli or sprouts are. The state of Hawaii too seems clear about its commitment to the site and all the activity around it. Despite the fact that aquaculture seems to overshadow the energy effort at present, the reliance of one on the other seems inescapable. OTEC by itself appears at present at least to not necessarily be cost competitive with oil. Uh, aquaculture by itself may very well not be cost competitive, especially cold water aquaculture, if you have to pay for the whole cost of installing the pipelines and pumping the water. Combined together with the shared use of this resource, which is the cold water, uh, there's no question that together they will be viable and it's a matter of putting together right now one of our goals is to put together a package which demonstrates to the bankers that we do have this viability. <laughs>